Hi all, we're going to look now at Kasparov in the Nara's 1992 tournament, which he managed to, to win. Um, it was his second in Nara's. Now he won it back in 1990, interrupted by Ivanchuk in 1991. So this is the first round now in 1992 against Jan Timmen. He was playing black. He played his favourite King's Indian defence. And Timmen played the Simish variation against Kasparov King's Indian. So this variation seems quite a logical and easy to play um, system. White playing bishop e3, preparing now queen d2 and usually castling queenside. Kasparov reacted with e5, so he prompted d5 from white, which slightly weakens the dark squares. Kasparov now played knight h5, liberating the f pawn to come to f5 to put a bit of pressure on white's centre. After castles queenside, now knight d7. So eyeing this c5 square, bishop d3, and now knight c5, now bishop c2. So it seems white's bishop manoeuvre is reinforcing the e4 square, so maybe it's better on c2 than f1. Now a6, so Kasparov is playing for a kind of Benko gambit, but he's keeping the tension in, in the centre, he hasn't played f4. And this way seems a little bit more effective than um, the game of Ivanchuk from the previous year um, against Gurevich, where Gurevich um, locked up the king side with f4. Here, Kasparov is still playing um, the Gurevich plan, the b5 plan, to gain counterplay, but it seems a lot more dangerous this way of playing it. So b4 slightly weakens this diagonal, and as we'll see, this becomes critical later on. In particular, the c3 square is weakened. So knight d7, and the knight has kind of done its job in, in creating this, this weakening of white's king side. So white temporarily wins a pawn, or trades it for this a2 pawn. Now knight c3, and now king b2, so maybe Timmons' plan was to share the a-file and perhaps get this manoeuvre in knight a7 to c6, so he'd be looking good. Sparov played knight df6, and now knight a7, so the positional idea. So white's just trying to play positioning on the queen side, where his king is. F takes e4 now, and now Timon played knight c6, and after queen d7, he didn't routinely play f takes e4 here. Let's have a quick look at f takes e4. My immediate um, move reply there was knight g4, because Ribka wasn't um, given any chance, but if given any chance, what does it think? It's really good. Bishop a6. It thinks is good. Bishop b7 so far, depth 10. So why is bishop b7 any good here? Let's have a look at bishop a6 first. So here, what would black be threatening? Maybe knight g4s. Let's have a quick example. b5, bishop b7, ok1. Now knight g4 here. And black is, according to Ribka, slightly better. But why? Why would this be the case? Knight a5, bishop c8. It seems okay for white, actually. Maybe this is a lot better than the game. So after f takes e4, what about an immediate knight g4? Um, let's say rook a1. If the bishop moves, by the way, so white would at least have to give up the bishop, because if it did move, then maybe bishop h6 here, getting a nice little trick, using a nice little trick to get that diagonal, with this knight supporting the bishop there. So maybe Tim didn't, he didn't want this um, knight g4, losing that dark squared bishop, which is often useful for white to have a kingside attack. But even so, it might have been better than the game. So in the game g4 was played, and now Kasparov played knight f4, so offering um, a, a pawn sack which totally you can't, white can't grab that because of this diagonal. So after g5 now, Kasparov blasts Timon off the board now with a brilliant peace sacrifice for two pawns. Currently he's two pawns up, six against four pawns. And he plays 
knight takes d5. So he's with this move, he's ripping open this diagonal, as we'll see. Knight takes d5, and he doesn't play e takes f, which might allow bishop e4, blockading his e-pawn. No, he makes sure his e-pawn can be liberated forward to extend this bishop. He plays knight d3 check. Now, if the bishop takes d3, e takes d3, he's temporarily a piece down for two pawns here. But white can't take on d3 because of e4 check. And there's a big threat now of e4 check, and this knight's in pre. So it looks as though white's in trouble here. Although a piece up, it's very, very difficult to play now. Tillman played knight c e7 check, and after king h8, this check was a little bit academic. What can white play here? It's all very dangerous. He played knight takes c8, and after e4 check, liberating the bishop, Timon actually resigned. So why did he resign here? Is it all over? Let's have a look. Knight c3. Black would have queen a4. Crushing move. It's threatening queen takes b4 check. Also queen a2, queen a3. There's no defense here. Um, let's give us an example. Um, but it's, it's just mating in all variations, actually. Um, was there anything else? King b3, queen a4 check, king b1, it's all mating because of this huge bishop. In fact, that's a mate in one there. So that's pretty incredible that the liberation of this bishop is spelled the end of the game, and Timon had resigned here. So it's quite a disaster, 25 moves. Let's have a look in overview and summary at this game. So it was a king's engine defense, Simish variation. So white bravely castling queen side. Now black played this Benko Gambit like um, plan for b5, but he kept the tension in the center. He didn't play f4, which didn't work for Gurevich the year before against Ivanchuk. Instead, this this Benko Gambit idea had the full force of it, with um, Spoff having a keen eye to extend his bishop on this diagonal. So he played knight f6, and after knight a7, he took on e4. So here, maybe, you know, the critical improvement for white, perhaps, is just f takes e4. Because the way the game was played turned into a disaster with this g4 and g5. Maybe Timon had completely overlooked this knight takes d5. Any other move, knight takes e4, black would be firmly under control. For example, knight h5, bishop takes e4, white's got a fine position. This bishop is not lethal on the diagonal. So the way Kasparov played it, simply unleashing the bishop at the cost of a piece for two pawns, and then this lovely knight d3 check, forcibly opening the bishop on the diagonal. And so it's quite a dramatic example of line opening against the opponent's king. Did Timon have any better here instead of knight takes c8? It looks fairly dire, but let's have a look at queen c3, which is a Rubika suggestion. Now, not um, e4 apparently, but bishop b7 would be good for black. Bishop b7. So, for example, rook takes d3, c6, and now white's pieces are stumbling. If the knight, well, the knight's trapped on d5, black would be apparently a lot better. Well, a little bit better, according to Ribka. So, um,. So in the game, Timon had just played knight takes c8, and after e4 check, it was curtains. So that was Kasparov's first round victory in the Lara's 1992, uh, showing again how dangerous the king's engine defense is, and how you can open line, an important key line with this king's engine bishop, against the white king, and that can be completely decisive. Please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.